Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Today we're going to be talking about nothing other than hypnosis. I just got an email. By the way, I just want to say thank you so much for subscribing, for downloading um, my YouTube and subscribing to my YouTube, Lisa Bubari, and uh, also sending me messages and asking me questions. I guess uh, last week when we did a uh, question and answer, someone had sent me an email now i've gotten more uh letters and messages which is absolutely wonderful yes by trade i'm your expert hypnotherapist and which i've been practicing for over two decades and we're going to be talking about that one day but today i got a message uh, when was it friday and it was uh, all kinds of questions about uh hypnosis being hypnotized how it feels and i thought what a great idea today i'm going to talk about uh hypnosis some of the myths and everything that you need to know actually it's like frequently asked questions about hypnosis so hello uh if you are here just make a comment i'd love to know who's here if you have any questions by all means we're live i'll be more than happy to respond to you okay so one of the most frequent questions that i get is uh, first and foremost, it's like, what is hypnosis? Okay, so allow me to say, hypnosis uh, has been a part of our world. It's been around for many, many uh, years, actually, more than a century. The word hypno or hypnos comes from the Greek god of sleep so it's like sleep and that is where the word comes from but is hypnosis like sleep or the question was do i fall asleep during hypnosis okay even though it's sleep like you are not asleep so most of my clients that come in here they go into a state of deep relaxation you can be anywhere and this feeling of it's like a sleep state and i like to share it and explain better by saying it's like watching tv and then when the commercials come you automatically drift into that state of relaxation or you can be watching TV and you go into a state of relaxation and if the phone rings you automatically open your eyes pick up the phone talk and then after that you sit back watch your TV and you drift into that sleep state you hear everything and if someone were to call you or something like that you open your eyes and you respond so it's like a sleep state a deep state of relaxation and yet a part of you which is your awareness your conscious part is very much aware until you fall asleep so in a way we go from consciousness to relaxation to hypnotic state and then sleep state okay now another question that was asked is if I were to be hypnotized what does it feel like it feels just utter relaxation pure relaxation and it's um, a state where your brain the activities of your conscious mind goes into a state of relaxation 
and your body is relaxed and what we do in a, a session is guide you into a deeper state of relaxation where actually even wherever you are right now you can just sit back Take a nice deep breath and exhale. You know, breath work is one of the most amazing ways for you to relax not only your mind but also your body. You can easily and gently relax every nerve and every muscle, every organ, every tissue in your body when you consciously decide to relax. So in a way, I guide my clients into this state of deeper relaxation. Frankly, just by my voice. Yes, you may have seen pendulum, right? which is the symbol of hypnosis because in the old days if you have watched movies and they wanted to hypnotize someone they would take a watch or better yet some would even take a pendulum and go like this and this is not a pendulum actually but yet it's the same effect And you are going deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper, just by watching. And this entire thing, eventually, it takes someone into that state of relaxation, right? And the same thing is when we are listening to the tick, tick sound of the clock or the small handle for the minutes on a clock it takes you into this state of momentum just like watching someone on a swing this entire momentum takes you into a deeper and deeper state of relaxation and that effect is just like a pendulum or a hammock that's why some hypnotherapists when they want to hypnotize someone they say just imagine because we work so much with your imagination actually before I even start doing any hypnosis or any hypnotic suggestions I definitely ask my clients what is their form of relaxation where do they feel relaxed and if it is at a beach I take them in that state of hypnosis with their eyes closed I ask them to imagine being at the beach side if someone likes hiking I ask them to imagine walking up on a trail and being one with nature if someone says my comfort place is my den in front of the TV then I ask them to imagine sitting the, uh, in their couch and feeling cozy maybe a blanket over them especially now that it's winter or there is a fireplace just the thought the imagination of watching fire in a fire pit right or even a candle moving ever so gently it is hypnotic so one of the questions asked is do I lose control when I am in hypnosis definitely not and that is a myth because especially when you are in a clinical setting working with me as a hypnotherapist and yes I will share the difference between hypnosis on stage and hypnosis in therapy but at no time are you out of control because at any time you can stop the process open your eyes 
and get up if you want to, if you want to. But most of the time, when you are in a hypnosis, hypnotherapy setting, you are here for a reason. And we're going to go over some of that, those questions. Now, on stage, what happens is, before anything, I've shared this before, but we need your consent to go into hypnosis. Just like the other day, I was working with my client, and as she's sitting there, I explain how the conscious and the subconscious work, right? And then how she's going to feel absolutely relaxed sitting in my recliner, and that eventually she's going to close her eyes, and when she closes her eyes, that she has full control and awareness at all time and she's going to be hearing my voice maybe even the sounds from the office outside maybe even traffic the cars and yet nothing really matters because she's just going to go into a deeper state of relaxation so we can do the work that she was here for while you are aware of everything and yet you're not really concerned about everything. Just as if you are sitting here listening to me and yet everything is happening around you, right? And at this very moment, someone may be passing behind you, calling you, the phone ringing or your phone dings because there is a message and it doesn't really matter because this is what you're concentrated on. Actually, in life, if we want to think about it, there is so much going on right here, right now, at this very moment, not only where you are, inside your body, everything that is happening inside, internally, every organ, every nerve, every muscle, every aspect that is happening, you're not in control over it until there is the pain factor or something is wrong and you're not in control of anything that is happening outside of your room your office your building everything right we've talked about this you have no control outside of you actually we never have control outside of us until something is there and you react so you don't, you're not controlling it, you are reacting to something. And that's what happens when you're, we're in a state of hypnosis, in that state of relaxation. You hear everything, but you are very focused on the matter that you are here for. Now, are you in control? As I said, you can you open your eyes and you say, uh, okay, you can talk to me. And then you close your eyes and you go deeper into that state of relaxation. So you're going in hypnosis, not under my control. And that's another myth. Or am I under somebody's control? Now, on stage, again, just like being in the office, you have given permission and you have agreed to be hypnotized on stage. So when you're on stage, you are part of the group. And the hypnotist, there is no therapy happening over there. It's for show, it's for entertainment, and it's for fun, right? But every hypnotist also wants to be a success as much as a hypnotherapist wants to succeed and help their client have the results that they want. So we're here to do the work and make everything good by you. The stage hypnotist also wants to have a great entertainment on stage so everyone watching is mesmerized. That's another word of being mesmerized and being in hypnosis or hypnotized. And you are mesmerized by what's happening in the showmanship that it's happening, the voice and the eyes and the gestures, right? All of that is showmanship. It's showtime. When they're asking 
certain people and they're qualifying them to see how fast they go into hypnosis and everyone is just like going like this and they're dropping it's how fast they take suggestions and being open to suggestions is absolutely wonderful on stage you are there for show entertainment and you will never do anything that it's against your morals your ethics and things that you would not do at any other time and the moment you feel that you feel uncomfortable when you stop responding to the hypnotist they know and they ask you to leave because again it's about show and they realize that you are not as susceptible to suggestions and they gently say okay you can step down so how does hypnosis work it's bypassing so there's the conscious mind and the subconscious and in between the conscious and the subconscious mind there is this critical factor we call it that's the medical or the terminology used for us to explain how it works I like to call it our mind is just like our cell phone because when you want to put information in there you take a picture which consciously you look listen and learn right and the conscious mind is doing everything it's seeing it's listening at all times if hopefully if your ears everything you are aware and you are in tune you are hearing even when you're not in tune of what is happening you still hear things but you're not paying attention to it and then it captures all that information that's all done consciously which is only approximately eight percent of your brain okay in between is a critical factor that analyzes and judges reasons and criticizes and does all that because we always analyze and reason and judge and criticize and want to explore things if that was not there whatever it is we would just say it and do with no judgment no reasoning no analyzing so that's called the critical factor truly it is the how do I say the curtain between the conscious and the subconscious now the subconscious has three um, factors which is it stores the information it re uh, rewinds okay you can go back and then it replays so I've explained this before but how does it work is when you are in that state of relaxation you automatically drop into that subconscious mind and it's that state of relaxation the difference between hypnosis and hypnotherapy is you can be hypnotized but we're not doing any therapy work the therapy part is just like a therapy doing therapy work and coaching and doing specific suggestions for the reasons you are here for such as if you want to become a non-smoker we do the suggestions for your mind your conscious and your subconscious to not only hear it accept it but also incorporate it with the subconscious mind and when there is this incorporation and the suggestion is taken by the subconscious and the conscious agrees when there is this agreement automatically then the new messages are taken so just like your cell phone you go in and if you have any information maybe contacts that you put in long time ago and you want to delete the information you delete the information that information is still in the archives in that little chip which is the subconscious but the contact is no longer in your contacts 
So if you scroll and you look for that contact, it's no longer there and yet is in the archives, maybe the clouds or the archives in that little chip on your phone. Got it? So anything that has happened in your life in the past, it's never ever deleted. You can never delete any experience from your past. But what we do is we modify the information and how you respond to that information. So a smoker that started at teenage years and wants to stop smoking can now become a non-smoker. The body still knows that they were smoking, but they no longer desire to have the cigarette. And that's how smoking cessation is so profound with hypnosis because of it's all about the subconscious. Now, the clinical hypnotherapy, I, uh, the subconscious mind stores all the information, our beliefs, habits, behavior, self-image, everything is part of that. So it's the reservoir of all your strengths and knowledge and experiences. Just like muscle has memory, your subconscious stores all that information. Now let's go. Does hypnosis really work? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Uh, specifically on many factors. I just did a blog, by the way, you can go to lisabubari.com and subscribe to my blog and every week you will have a new I have a new blog and you can see the information and you can download it you can read and learn and if you have any questions by all means you can always uh, contact me just like this wonderful uh, person who messaged me and said would you please explain the difference between hypnosis and uh, the mess. Is hypnosis scary? Not at all. We go in and out of hypnosis. It's a wonderful state of relaxation. Um, I hypnotize myself actually every day. Self-hypnosis. You can learn how to do self-hypnosis and actually um, have a profound and yet powerful state of relaxation for seven minutes and then bring yourself to full conscious awareness have a loads of energy yes you can so i was talking about the blog because um clinical hypnosis and the western medicine nowadays there are so many physicians that are also recommending hypnosis for pain management for sleep for ibs for smoking cessation especially uh, doctors who are preliminary and uh, they are urging their patients to stop smoking um, if they are uh, smoking and they have heart problems lung problems and they can uh, it works with asthma also so hypnosis is very effective with that hypnosis is also quite effective with IBS and I've talked about this with irritable bowel syndrome and especially sleep disorders sleep apnea uh, weight issues now all of those are things that are uh, can be edited and shifted in the subconscious mind so that is why it is very much used and referred by physicians does insurance pay for hypnosis most insurance companies do not cover hypnosis or hypnotherapy they do not some insurance companies some corporations some companies uh, do offer especially when it comes to anxiety fears weight issues smoking cessations sleep disorders and some profound medical issues that some insurance companies cover <coughs> 
I had an attorney refer a client to me because of uh, during an accident uh, she went into a shock and she could not drive anymore and that fear factor is and phobic reactions because of phobia she could not drive anymore so we helped her get over the fear factor the phobia and she was able to drive elevators are another one going into elevators height those are all fear factors that it's not real but it is real for the client and that's why hypnosis works very much it's very beneficial and it's fast and that's why hypnotherapy is profound on some of those so yes I do work with clients who are referred Alan says thoughtful I guess we do use our voice as a rhythm pendulum to take our clients deeper hi Alan how are you it's so good to have you here yes I believe it's not the voice that I use right here but when I want to go into that hypnotic state and take my clients into that hypnotic state I shift my voice right uh, we all do as hypnotherapists we've learned how to modify our voice to become deeper and I learned this from Gil Boyne so the voice that happens it is a whole di different tonality so the tone changes and the way we take it into that rhythmic voice and sound becomes just like the pendulum easy gentle drifting deeper and deeper into a hypnotic state allowing yourself to go deeper within yourself so automatically you see how easy it was for me to shift into that voice into that state that guides my client into their own state of deep relaxation so yes thank you Alan for bringing that up we do it so naturally after so many years and kudos to you you are truly one of the master hypnotherapists that, that I know and I look forward to seeing you soon um, and I guess that was some of the questions that we had it is almost my time and if you have any other questions by all means this is Lisa your expert hypnotherapist send me a message DM me email me at Lisa Bubari at gmail.com and I'll be more than happy to respond to any of your uh, questions inquiries and if you have any more questions go to Lisa Bubari.com and it is you can see our blog and it is the frequently asked questions in our contact and explore we've got so much bringing to you starting February you know I'm celebrating my birthday celebrating a new way of being um, until then by all means God bless you and may the universal uh, light surround you at all times I look forward to seeing you next week and until then be safe and God bless bye everyone Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.